Hi, it's Finover here and welcome to my studio. Today in this video I want to show you how to alter an um, wooden panel or a piece of canvas. And because it is all inspired by trash to treasure challenge we've made with Primo Marketing, you can expect some unusual supplies used as well. Enjoy watching! I wanted to make my project on a piece of canvas or piece of wood that would be quite slim and long. I really got addicted to this kind of shape. The problem was I couldn't find anything suitable in my studio, so in the end I found a really lovely white wooden panel, which was made by Prima, and I asked my husband to cut it in half. This way I got two slim panels instead of one and I could work on the top of that using some of the trash which in this case were pieces of my own packaging I cut pieces of the plastic blisters and started creating background using the, um, this ingredient which is going to be quite a cool thing I had my plastic pieces ready and I decided to start with the big flat piece that I wanted to curl a little bit that I could have something interesting dimensional on my wooden background. I used a bit of my heavy body gel to attach the strip of the plastic blister on the top of the panel and then using my heat gun and being very careful I started to heat the plastic and curl it using my scissors or my fingers I don't recommend the second thing and slowly slowly when the plastic was um, hot I could warp it I could um, curl it a little bit this way I created really interesting uh, background effect Because I wanted plastic to be curved nicely on both sides, I first did one side and then when it was uh, cooled down and it kept the shape, I could repeat the same thing on the other side. Please make sure you're going to do it in a safe way, don't touch it with your fingers when it's still hot. I was planning really dimensional composition so uh, I prepared some of the elements that were uh, made with the two ingredient casting resin and my molds. I used mold called Mechanica with a lot of mach machine parts and mold uh, cogs and wings where I did more of the machine parts and the lovely wings that would add extra touches to my project. I made these all up front and they were almost like plastic so I could um, use them as traditional embellishments on my project. My project was really inspired by trash, so I wanted to include as much unusual elements in the uh, composition as possible. For example, part of the alarm clock that was really nice mechanical shape or piece of empty wax tin and um, I had a plan to put one part under the panel because there was empty space I could use and one part to be main focal point of my composition. I started using my heavy body gel to glue the elements and build my dimensional grungy composition on the top of the wooden panel and curled plastic Of course, not all of the elements were fitting perfectly. I had to cut some of them and remove some parts to make sure they're going to fit better and um, it's going to be easier to level up the whole composition. And um, after that, of course, I was putting one on the top of another very close to each other using my heavy body gel as main adhesive. My next step was adding extra touches and these were again pieces of plastic packaging and I picked two squares like mini shaker boxes that came from the um, package of my knobs and I added them on the top and on the bottom of my composition they were adding extra detail I really liked Once 
once I was happy with my uh, elements made from the mold and um, pieces of blister plastic packaging, I could start sm um, adding smaller details. For example, my mechanicals. And I was trying to pick um, some elements that will fit into the composition nicely, such as uh, knobs taken from the package I used already, uh, some uh, metal flowers like lotus and maybe some stars. Step by step, I was using my heavy body gel to add the details to the composition. And um, from time to time, I was just removing the excess of the gel to make sure it's going to be a little bit cleaner. In the last stages of my work, I added an um, element of the watch or the uh, art pebbles, which are like small cabochons which are transparent but and they add beautiful dimension to the composition. I was adding them uh, to add the finishing touches and after that I could dry everything with my heat gun. When elements were securely sitting on my panel, when they were not moving after drying, I could start adding first coat of color and this time I started with a primer, which was Art Basics White Heavy Gesso. I was planning to um, add the wh a whiter coat because for the future coloring that will be the best solution, but also uh, the primer makes everything match, so the paints, waxes or any other products will stick better to the primed surface. I used just one coat of the uh, gesso and that was enough to whitewash the colors and um, prime the surfaces. And when the gesso was dry, I could add more detail, more texture and feel the empty gaps between the embellishments a bit using uh, mini art stones or art stones. <laughs> and to attach them, I used my soft gloss gel, very transparent, sticky gel medium that is easy to apply with a small brush or if you prefer you can even put it in the fine tip bottle. I started my art stones application with the bigger ones, the art stones, and then I sprinkled mini art stones all around the um, composition so they could stick wherever they wanted to go. After I tapped off the excess I could dry it again and I was ready to start painting. My surface was dry and it was a time to start adding the colors. I decided to use my liquid acrylics and my choices were shades of brown, red and pink. In the video you can see I've picked burnt sienna, amber, carmine, uh, black ink and finally magenta. These are the colors that uh, you can replace with other acrylics as well, but for this color palette and um, I think these colors work just perfectly. Another, op uh, another important thing is going to be the water sprayer because it's sometimes easier to spray some of the colors instead of adding them with the brush. You can see how quickly uh, you can prepare coloring spray using my liquid acrylics. In this video, I am opened a, a bottle with the water and added a few drops of burnt sienna into the spray bottle and after shaking, my permanent acrylic spray was ready. I started the whole painting process by spraying this um, burnt sienna on the top of my panel, more or less on all of the embellishments to give it like a starting color. After that, I could um, use the colors more in a selective way. Uh, I took my small brush and all the mm, paints that were on my palette, I could now apply in the selected places of the composition. Don't forget to add water from time to time. It helps the paints to blend with each other and the colors look more like watercolor instead of acrylic. As you can see, the first colors I was using were quite dark. After brown spray, I added ink black to make the composition really grungy. And in the next steps, I was trying to add the rusty colors. So I focused on carmine. And then after adding even more of the brown, 
I was working more um, on the grungy, rusty color palette, step by step, adding different uh, shades of brown and orange. After some time of painting, my project was really wet, so I decided to take a break and dry it with my heat gun. I could check how much color I've got everywhere, and it was a perfect moment to decide if I need to add more to it or is it finished. After I looked at the dried project, I decided I need to break the color palette a little bit and I added a bit of magenta color together with more of the carmine and then a little bit more brown and black. This way I got my final coloring of the project. It was orange, red, pink and brown and black of course. Very grungy, very rusty color palette. I had to dry it again with the heat gun to make sure everything will be completely permanent. My colors were very bright and I felt the dimension was missing a little bit so I decided to dry brush a bit of white gesso on the top of my dimensional elements. I put more of the gesso on the outside of the composition to whitewash it a little bit and then just a little bit on the um, embellishments in the middle. If I was putting too much, I could always remove it with the baby wipe to make sure the colors are exactly the way I want it. Dry brushing is very um, nice technique and you can use it for many projects. I took my time to carefully dry brush white just so everywhere I wanted to at the highlights and to make sure the dimension is really visible. I was checking from time to time um, if it's enough and finally when I was happy with the final results I dried everything completely with the heat gun. After white gesso I decided to bring back a little bit of darker color in selected places so I used my liquid acrylics again there were shades of black and a little bit of brown and rusty and I was ready to add the finishing touches to my whole project. Because I wanted um, the elements which I made with the resin to look more like real metal, I rubbed a bit of um, Art Alchemy metallic wax in old silver color on the top of them. That also helped me highlight some of the details, but I really wanted the project to be very grungy. Finally, it was a time to add the images and sentiments to the project. I decided to uh, use one of the uh, images from the vintage photo booth sticker set I made for our daily collection. And this gentleman was supposed to be um, sitting on the top of my uh, wax tin that was like the focal point of my whole composition to make sure it's going to be completely flat and it will be uh, attached in a nice way I added a layer of the chipboard under the sticker and um, I just cut it a little bit smaller so the size of the sticker matches the composition For extra detail and interest, I added some white thread in the middle of the metal tin and then using 3D foam squares, I just glued my, um, my image on the top of the uh, composition. And um, if, if you are looking for this kind of solution, you don't have 3D foam squares or the double-sided tape, you can just use a piece of cardboard to lift the photo uh, enough to stick uh, to the composition nicely. The last element was um, a little text I found in one of the Team Holtz uh, sticker books and using the same trick with the uh, 3D foam squares, I cut it even smaller, I added the text on the top of the photo and even used my tea infusion to color the image and the text a little bit so it looks more vintage, grungy and more natural in this color palette.
I hope you like this um, trash to treasure inspiration. It's really fun to reuse and recycle the elements or um, leftovers that people usually throw away. They're a great addition to many projects and they can really spark your creativity. If you would like to see more of the videos like that, please send me a message or leave a comment. Let me know that you are interested in this kind of project. It's really great to hear from you. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel or to my uh, Instagram account and visit the website finavar.com where we have plenty of inspiration coming twice a week, all provided by my super talented design team. Now you can also support me and sponsor me a little bit becoming a member on my YouTube channel or becoming my official patron on my Patreon site. I highly recommend because together we can really make a lot of creative magic happen. Thank you so much for watching and see you again soon.